Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India lecture series on the calculus of variations. This is the seventh lecture of the series. In the last lecture, we introduced fundamental concepts of the variations and uh, related topics. Uh, we uh, started with uh, the concept of uh, variation uh, of uh, a function uh, f defined from the interval a to b to r and we defined the concept of differential of this function. Here, the variation delta f uh, is actually the difference of the values of f at x plus delta x and f x. So, delta f, the variation in f is defined as f of x plus delta x minus f of x, which is actually equal to this a has to be a function of x. So, we will write the dependence of x on a like this a of x a of x times delta x plus beta comma delta x into delta x. So, here this beta is assumed to have this property that it tends to 0 as delta x tends to 0. So, if f is uh, differentiable if and only if this 6.1 holds that is the variation delta f has the property that it this difference is equal to a x times delta x plus beta x comma delta x times delta x. This a will be function of x in general. So, that is what is here uh, 6.1 uh, holds if and only if f is differentiable and we can see that this a actually has to be a prime x. So, this a of course is a function of x which is the derivative of f at x which can be seen uh, just dividing 6.1 by delta x and letting delta x tend to 0. So, it uh, this since beta is tending to 0 as delta x tends to 0. So, this term goes to 0 and so this tends the right hand side of this uh, delta f by delta x tends to a of x as delta x tends to 0. And therefore, uh, this uh, since this uh, delta f by delta x limit, uh, this is actually equal to by definition the derivative of f at x and therefore, a x must be a prime x. So, we see that uh, in the case of function, we have uh, this result that variation delta f has to be then a prime x delta x plus beta x comma delta x times delta x. This uh, part underlying part is uh, clearly uh, linear in x uh, uh, linear in delta x and therefore, it is called linear part in the increment of f and uh, this is what is called differential and therefore, it is uh, this differential is denoted by d f and so therefore, d f must be a prime x delta x. And uh, if we take f x equal to x that the identity function, then we can see that f prime x is 1 and therefore, d x must be equal to delta x. So, for independent variable differential is the same as uh, the variation and we have this d f differential of f equal to f prime x d x. This concept of differential can be extended to higher dimensions in the following manner that it's, uh, f let us say in particular we take uh, function of two variables x y and assuming that uh, this f is defined from a domain in r 2 into r and uh, assume that x y and x plus delta x and y plus delta y are points in d then we can see that uh, this variation d f is actually equal to f of x plus delta x comma y plus delta y minus f x y. And we say that this f is differentiable, uh, f is differentiable if and only if this delta f the variation in 
f that is delta f is equal to this a. So, a and b will be of course, functions of x and y here and we can see that uh, this uh, difference has to be then equal to uh, del a delta x plus b delta y plus beta x comma y square root of delta x square plus delta y square, y square times del uh, square root of delta x square plus delta y square. So, f is differentiable if and only if 6.2 holds and we can see that by the same process uh, if we take delta y 0 and then divide by delta x we see that uh, this a has to be actually then equal to del f by del x at x y. Similarly, b has to be so the, these are functions of x y because the derivatives are to be evaluated at x y this at x y similarly this at x comma y. So, these a and b are actually uh, the, the partial derivatives of f with, uh, with respect to x and y respectively uh, at evaluated at x y. And so, this is the linear part in the in, uh, these increments delta x and delta y. So, that is what we call linear part in the increment of the function f and it is denoted as differential as before in the uh, one dimensional case. And so, we denote d f the differential of f as f x partial derivative of uh, f with respect to x uh, times d x plus f y d y since these delta x and delta y are same as d x d y. So, we get this. Now, we want to uh, uh, extend this concept of uh, variation uh, for the functionals. So, we have this functional uh, for example, this is our functional here. So, if we change if we vary y then what is the variation in uh, i uh, this integral that is what we want to define. So, here first we need to define the variation in y itself like we had variation in x that was uh, delta x and which was same thing as the differential uh, d x. So, what is happening in this case that is what we want to define here let us say y x is a y x and y tilde x are two admissible functions that means, they pass through these two points fixed points uh, a and b and then the uh, they have the property that the integral is uh, this functional is defined. So, these y and y tilde x are admissible functions and we want to see that what. So, the variation here in y is defined like this delta y at x is y tilde x minus y x. So, this ordinate here uh, this ordinate at this uh, upper one minus ordinate at this. So, this is the difference between those two ordinates. So, whatever is remaining inside these two is what uh, defined as the variation uh, delta y at x. So, if x changes over this whole interval we have different uh, delta y here like this here and like this. So, it is a function of x when x varies over the interval x 1 to x 2 and uh, then here we want to see that what is that a i y plus delta y. So, here y will be replaced by y plus delta y and what is this y prime uh, y plus delta y prime that is what we will also come into picture and so uh, if we define delta y like this y tilde x minus y x clearly then uh, delta y prime is uh, this y tilde prime minus y prime x and you can clearly see that this is same thing as delta y prime x. So, variation in uh, the derivative of the variation is in this case is the variation of the derivative. So, th that is how it is defined in this case and we say that uh, since here the concept of uh, nearness of this y and y tilde has to be made precise and that is what we do in the following manner. We, do, uh, we say that this two functions these two functions uh, y and y tilde are epsilon close epsilon is a positive quantity here epsilon close uh, to each other in the g 0 order of proximity. 
So, this is the order of proximity here we are de defining uh, in the in this following manner that we say that y tilde x and y x are epsilon close to each other in zero order proximity if uh, maximum of this x 1 less than equal to x less than equal to x 2 of y tilde more absolute value of y tilde x minus y x that is the difference between ordinates the absolute value of that uh, is less than epsilon for all x in the interval. So, we take maximum of the all these difference of ordinates they should be less than epsilon. Now, we say that uh, these y tilde and y x are epsilon close to each other in first order proximity if uh, not only the difference between the ordinates of y, but uh, the difference between the ordinates of y tilde are also epsilon close uh, for all values of x. So, that is what is stated here the maximum of x 1 less than x less than equal to x 2 of the absolute value of the difference of ordinates at x is less than epsilon. Similarly, uh, difference between the ordinates of y prime absolute value of that and maximum of uh, the these quantities over the interval x is less than epsilon. So, similarly we can extend it to k, k order proximity in the same manner that all the derivatives uh, y tilde j minus y j this is the jth derivative here. So, the difference between the ordinates of jth derivative are close epsilon close to each other. So, uh, this is uh, I mean uh, the difference between the ordinates of uh, jth derivative is less than uh, epsilon in the absolute value. So, here where j is uh, 1, 2 to n. So, for example, if we consider this y tilde x equal to uh, epsilon sin x by epsilon and uh, y uh, x equal to identically 0 on x 1 less than x less than x 2, then we see that this delta y at x is nothing but uh, epsilon sin x by epsilon. And so, absolute value of this, so absolute value of y, because y x is identically 0 here. So, this is less than equal to epsilon mod sin x by epsilon and sin uh, here is always bounded by 1. So, this is less than equal to epsilon. So, here we see that here we have to allow the equality also less than equal to in all these. So, we see that uh, these two curves are uh, close epsilon close. So, y tilde and y are epsilon close in the zero order proximity, but this uh, y tilde prime x is cos x by epsilon and so uh, and y prime x is identically 0 anyway and so therefore and hence this delta y prime x is cos of x by epsilon and absolute value of this equal to absolute value of cos x by epsilon which is only uh, bounded by 1. And so, if we take epsilon equal to half then we see that y tilde and y are not epsilon close to first order of proximity.
they are close to uh, they are anyway close to each other in zero order proximity for all epsilon positive, but they are not close to each other in first order proximity if you take epsilon to be strictly less than 1, because if you take epsilon equal to half you can see that this uh, cannot be satisfied, this cannot be less than uh, half in general here. So, we can see that this is an example where epsilon uh, where y and y tilde are close to each other only in 0 order proximity. So, uh, here we define that. So, if this i y we say that it is i y has local maximum in uh, local maximum at y if i y plus delta y is less than i y for delta y small similarly i y similarly i y has local minimum at y if i y plus delta y is greater than equal to i y for delta y small. Now, if uh, if this i y has local maximum or minimum at y for all delta y in 0 order, 0 order proximity, then we say that that the maximum or minimum is strong. If i y has local maximum or minimum at y for only for higher order proximity, then the minimum or maximum sorry maximum or a minimum maximum or minimum is called weak. Clearly, if the maximum is achieved, uh, achieved at uh, zero order proximity it uh, uh, strongly then it is also achieved uh, in the higher order proximity uh, in the weak sense also and uh, so he, but it there may be cases where the closeness in the higher order proximity is required minimum may not exist at lower order proximities then we say that 
such minimum and maximum so are uh, weak. Now, here we uh, define this variation in the same manner as we define for the function we want to extend it to the case where we have the functionals. So, first before going into that we need to define certain concepts of linearity and so on for functionals. So, here we know that a function f from a to b to r is called linear if l if you have f of x plus y is f of x plus f of y for x y in a b and f of c x is c times f x for x y for x in x y in a b and c is in r, c is a constant in r. So, similarly, if i here a functional where it is from some admissible class defined on certain interval a to b into r. So, here a is the admissible class of functions for which this i will make sense. So, then here if you take two functions like this y 1 y 2 then it should be like this i of y 1 plus i of y 2 and this is called linear if and i of this constant c times i y. So, this is the same manner we defined where y 1, y 2 are in this a the admissible class and c is a number in this. So, linearity is defined in the same manner. For example, here uh, this functional i of example here of that x 1 to x 2 here of p x y plus q x y prime d x. So, this i is linear here, i is linear. This is an example here of this. Next, we define the continuity. So, recall the continuity So, f from a to b into r is called continuous if continuous at x belonging to a b if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta which is a function of epsilon as well as x and this is also positive such that for such that for y minus x less than this delta implies f of y minus f of x is less than epsilon. So, here it is uh, like this a and b and function here let us say at this point what should happen at this point x 
if we take a neighborhood around this all y's in this so the delta neighborhood delta this is x minus delta to x plus delta in this interval wherever that y is there this f x f x is here this is f x. So, and this is epsilon strip this is f x plus epsilon this is f x minus epsilon. So, here uh, these values f y must lie within this strip. So, and this is what is like this uh, sorry. Uh, this x minus delta to x plus delta strip. So, this point x f x or y f y must lie this is x f x and here. So, within this rectangle these values must lie y f y must lie here y comma f y this point must lie within this rectangle. So, that is what it means if we have these values sufficiently uh, these uh, values y sufficiently close to x then the values f y will also be lying sufficiently close here in this y strip. So, that is what is the continuity of a function. So, here the continuity of a functional we will be defining in this following sense. So, here if we consider this i y. So, i y will be continuous at y if we consider this neighboring variations. So, this is delta i So, if we uh, take this delta y sufficiently close to so this so i is called continuous at y if for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists delta which will be function of this and y here such that this absolute value of i y plus delta y minus i y will be less than epsilon. So, it is extended in the same manner as the uh, function case. So, the continuity of this functional is defined in the same manner. Now, we want to define the variation of of a functional So, we have already considered this i uh, y and i y plus delta y the difference between them we say that as we define define variation of a function we say that the variation delta i of a functional i exists if the following holds if uh, this delta i has the form which is nothing but delta at delta will be a function of y. This i y plus delta y minus i y this has the form that there is a linear part here it is function of y as well as delta y and sorry.
plus beta y delta y and then the absolute value of the maximum times maximum of delta y. This maximum is taken over the interval maximum over a b, where i is defined such that this beta y comma delta y tends to and tends to 0 as delta y tends to 0 and this L is linear in delta y. So, we say that this is uh, 7.1 we will call. We say that the uh, variation of functional i exists if and only if 7 point holds that is the uh, delta i that the difference i y plus delta y minus i y uh, has the form that there is a linear part in the increment that is l y delta y. This is linear in delta y plus uh, here the uh, term beta y comma delta y times maximum of absolute value of delta y. This maximum is taken over the interval where this i functional i is defined. So, we say that this variation exists if and only if 7.1 holds. Now, here there is another way of defining equivalent way of defining the functional uh, variation of a functional another equivalent definition. of the variation. For example, in the case of in the case of a function, we know that uh, this uh, d f we had defined uh, d f equal to f prime x uh, delta x or delta x or the same thing as f prime x uh, d x. Here we can see that this is also equal to if we consider f of x plus alpha delta x and uh, differentiate it partially with respect to this and evaluate it at alpha equal to 0. This is the same thing as f prime at x plus uh, del alpha delta x and then uh, this argument differentiated with respect to alpha gives you delta x. This thing evaluated at alpha equal to 0. So, this gives you f prime x delta x, which is same thing as f prime x uh, d x from here. So, there is this is a convenient way of uh, defining uh, equivalent way of defining the uh, differential of uh, f. Same way, if we imitate this definition for the functional, we can consider in the following manner that we uh, consider here uh, delta i y as i y plus alpha delta y minus i y. So, this will be then equal to uh, if variation exists then from uh, 7.1 this should be equal to l y alpha delta y 
plus beta y alpha delta y and mod alpha maximum of delta y. And here, if we divide by uh, this, so if we divide by this uh, here, delta alpha and then take limit delta alpha tending to 0, which is the same thing as limit delta alpha tending to 0, this is delta alpha of delta i y upon alpha, because uh, delta alpha is alpha minus 0, which is same thing as alpha. And so, you uh, since this l is linear, we see that this will give you y delta y plus here you will have beta y alpha delta y and here you will have alpha over this maximum mod delta y. And since this quantity is bounded, this quantity is bounded and this quantity goes to 0 as delta y as since alpha tends to 0, therefore, alpha delta y will tend to 0 as alpha delta y tends to 0. And so, uh, this will be equal to this the whole thing limit of this delta alpha tending to 0 of the whole thing. And so, this will be equal to L y delta y, which is uh, the linear part in the variation. This is the linear part in the variation. The variation of the functional. And so, this is what will be actually defined as, as uh, so this hence we define as we defined as we define the differential. as we define the differential, we define uh, variation delta i as l y delta y. Here, this is we should change this notation here. This is delta i at y this also will change to delta. So, that we use different notation for the variation and the difference. Similarly, here let me correct that. Okay. So, here also we change this to delta. So, this is the difference, uh, uh, this capital delta will be uh, used to define uh, the difference between the values at y of uh, the functional i at y plus delta y. This delta is used for variation. So, this is a variation of the uh, function y itself and this is the difference in the values of uh, the functional. And uh, we say that if variation exists, this variation we will be uh, defining as delta i. So, here uh, we say that the variation of the functional exists if and only if the 7.1, which means that the difference is equal to this linear part in the increment that is l y comma delta y uh, plus 
beta y comma delta y times maximum of absolute value of delta y. And we see that uh, provided this beta goes to 0 as delta y tends to 0, we say that the variation of i exists and we as we define the differential of a function, we, we define here the variation of this functional the linear part in the increment. So, that is what we have in the case of uh, the functional. Now, here we uh, will consider in the same manner as we uh, consider the in the function case, we can have equivalent definition uh, like this that equivalently we define this i y plus alpha delta y and then partial derivative with respect to alpha and evaluated at alpha equal to 0. This is what we have seen in this case as the variation and so this is what will be called the uh, delta i at y. So, this is what equivalent definition is very convenient to use, this is what we will be using subsequently in our lectures. Now, let us consider here the case of the simple uh, first which we consider this i of y which is actually equal to x 1 to x 2 f x y x y prime x d x. So, we would apply this equivalent definition here of the functional uh, the version of the functional and we will see that we will consider here uh, i of y plus alpha delta y and then uh, we will uh, differentiate it with respect to alpha and then we will equate that to 0 and see that uh, the condition which is to be satisfied by the function y is what we will be getting as an uh, the necessary condition for this y to optimize this functional and that is what will be giving us the Euler equation which is to be satisfied by the uh, function y in order uh, this functional to be optimized. So, that is what will be considered in the next lecture. Thank you very much for viewing this.